After a bit of over two years of ownership, my Elegoo Jupiter's LCD screen decided it didn't want to be part of the team anymore and just stopped displaying images. Today we're going to go through replacing that and getting it working beautifully yet again. To start the process, we need to remove the vat of resin, which, of course, is always full when we need to remove it. Remove the thumb screws on both sides of the vat, and then lift the vat out and carefully set it aside. Once the vat is removed, we need to remove the LCD screen. Start by removing the eight Allen screws on the bezel and set them aside. These screws require a 2.5mm bit, but I believe the printer actually comes with one. Regardless, I'll be linking to this awesome little electric screwdriver in the description below. Once the screws are removed and you lift the bezel up, you can carefully remove the ribbon cable that attaches the board to the front panel board. Simply push down on the black retaining lever, and it should slide right out. With everything removed, let's move to the kitchen tabletop to begin working on it. <laughs> because the kitchen table is obviously the best work spot in the house for all of this, right? Inside of the box, you'll get a new ribbon cable, in case you tore the other one, tape strips, outside adhesive, and zip ties, as well as the screen obviously. We need to remove the LCD screen from the bezel. Start by cutting the zip ties off and making it to where the control board can fold down. We'll remove that in just a little bit. Remove the black tape on the sides of the LCD as this holds it into the bezel. Elegoo doesn't sell the Jupiter LCD with a bezel anymore, so we're using the Jupiter SE screen, which is the exact same screen, Nani? just without an expensive metal bezel. With the tape removed, we need to remove the control board. Remove the hot glue that's covering the connectors so you can get the ribbon cables removed. To remove the cables, simply lift up on the black retaining tab and then slide the cables out. Once the board is removed, you can then remove the LCD panel from the bezel. It is adhered in with double-sided tape, so it will take a bit of force to remove it from the bezel. Thankfully, we're throwing this LCD panel away anyway, so you can be a bit rough with it and not care. With the panel removed, we need to clean up the bezel and remove the old adhesive. I always find it easier to just scrape off the majority of it with a tool, in this case an X-Acto knife with a chisel blade, before using alcohol to clean the edges. Once the majority of the adhesive is removed, grab some isopropyl alcohol and soak the remaining adhesive and then scrape and wipe it away until you have a nice and clean surface. This is a bit tedious to do, but it's definitely important to get the surface clean for the new LCD panel. After the surface has been thoroughly cleaned, it's time to put the new adhesive onto the bezel. The new LCD came with double-sided adhesive, so carefully put it onto the bezel and make sure to keep it on the inside of the bezel. Once 
once you have it all down, you can remove the outside cover for the tape. With the bezel prepared, it's now time to do the same for the new screen. Remove the black protective tape over the connectors and remove the control panel so we can slide it into the bezel. Now, the astute of you will notice where I uh, messed up a bit here. This screen is flipped over, which definitely makes it not work properly. I'm going to jump cut to where I did it correctly and put the mess up at the end of the video for you guys to enjoy. Make sure to remove the screen films that are on the LCD panel. The one you just saw me peel is the one that is supposed to be face down, so if you see that peelable piece, it's flipped over. Don't, don't pull at me, flip it back over. With the screen properly installed, there's another protection film. This one is harder to get off, but you'll want it removed. <laughs> Comically, I actually never removed this one from my original screen. Could explain some of the issues I had with that thing for a while. With the protective film removed, go ahead and grab your black strips and place them around the edges of the LCD. I think these are mainly just for in case you spill resin that it doesn't get behind the screen. I'm honestly not sure. With the screen face down, preferably on a towel or a piece of styrofoam, go ahead and connect the control board back in place, being careful to make sure none of the ribbon cables are torn in the process. They take a little bit to fully seat in, but it's not too bad of a process. With the LCD fully assembled, it's time to put it back into the printer. Set it gently on the edge of the case and reconnect the ribbon cable at the front of the printer. And make sure the cable is tucked toward the front of the case so it doesn't cast a shadow onto the print surface. Before you worry about screwing it in, go ahead and run your test to make sure everything looks proper and works. In the top right corner, you can see what I had the first time I did this and had to take it all apart. Learn from my mistakes. But with that done and working properly, put your screws that hold the bezel back in and you're good to go. And as promised, the last two minutes or so of this video is me struggling like crazy trying to put this screen in backwards. Absolute nightmare to do because, well, it's, it's not supposed to go that way. With all of that said, if you like the content I'm putting out, make sure to like, 
comment, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all new content as it comes out. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.